Insomniac Spider-Man vs. Arkham Batman. When we think of a matchup of heroes in the gaming world, there's no greater comparison than New York Savior and Gotham's symbol of fear. With one being able to take on six of his greatest enemies by himself, and the other being able to take on all of them in a single night. So who wins? The Spider versus the Bat. Who wins? Insomniac Spider-Man versus Arkham Batman. Both Spider-Man and Batman have shown to be able to be shot and survive, being shown to be able to survive small building level explosions, whether it be from bombs, negative energy, or power plants. Spider-Man alone has been punched through a bank vault door and survived electric shocks from Electro, which can malfunction a helicopter with a single strike. Spider-Man and Batman also have been shown to survive large building level explosions, as Batman was locked inside a room inside Arkham Asylum, and the bomb detonated next to him at point-blank range and yet he walked away from it completely unscathed. As well as Batman having durability relative or higher than the Arkham Knight who did the same, and Spider-Man was smashed through a pillar by Electro, which has been gouged a large building level, which means at the peak of their durability, they would be relative if not slightly in Spider-Man's favor, as he has more consistent feats of tanking building level attacks. However, given his symbiote suit, this gets much worse for Batman, as he would have relative durability to Miles who can endure energy powerful enough to level New York's Bureau of Harlem, which has been down to multi-city block level. However, this is a little contentious as Miles being able to endure this might be a lot easier than Peter, as Miles has Venom that allows him to perform this feat. And it was even agreed upon by everyone that even though Miles had all of these abilities, Abilities, he should have died. Both Spider-Man and Batman would have fluid durability as they've both been hurt by attacks much weaker and tanked powerful ones. It's safe to say that if both combatants, if given the opportunity, would definitely be able to damage each other. In terms of speed, Spider-Man and Batman are ridiculously fast, able to dodge gunfire on a consistent basis, able to dodge rocket launchers, grenade launchers, and blitz a group of men before they even realize what hit them. With travel speed I see being relative, especially with Batman's version 3 grapnel, however combat speed is a completely different story. Batman can knock out a group of 4 men before they can even process him being there. The way he moves in the game is so extremely fast that a group of 15 to 20 men can be sleeping on the ground in less than 10 seconds, but both of them can move even faster. With Spider-Man and Batman being able to dodge electricity, with Batman being faster than Catwoman who can dodge an electric blast from a military-grade militia drone, and Spider-Man himself being able to dodge Electro's blast that are stated to be lightning, which would make their reaction speeds high hypersonic. However, I would give the slight edge to Batman, as he would be much faster than Catwoman who performed the same feat as Spider-Man. Spider-Man and Batman have both been shown to be able to lift people up with one arm, burst through walls, and even lift various heavy objects. However, in terms of raw lifting strength, Spider-Man would be far superior. Even though Batman can flip Killer Croc over his shoulder, Spider-Man makes Killer Croc look like nothing. Being able to slow down an 800-foot, 134,640-pound crane, pull 80,000-pound semi-trucks, bend train tracks, throw helicopter tails in the air with one arm, and he's relative to Miles who can pull two parts of a bridge together. However, lifting doesn't mean you hit harder. For example, the heaviest lifter in the world isn't the hardest puncher, and the same would be true for these two. In terms of attack potency, they would once again even out, as Bane can tank explosions and Killer Croc who can destroy the halls of Blackgate Prison are still knocked out by Batman's fist alone. And Spider-Man who can damage Rhino who can tank explosions and run through buildings putting both of their attack potencies at building to large building level, but if Peter is once again given the black suit, he would be hitting way harder. With Black Suit Spider-Man being able to damage Miles who performed his Harlem feat. However, like I said before, their durability would be fluid as Miles was able to get his ribs broken on a metal bar by the Tinkerer, which is kinda, yeah. Both Spider-Man and Batman are extremely skilled, being able to use various forms of martial arts to overwhelm their opponents. Spider-Man is an extremely skilled gymnast that uses professional Taekwondo and Muay Thai strikes with a Kabueta flow flashy wrestling and Lucha Libre finishes with unpredictable melee attacks to destroy his opponents, and his spider sense makes him that much harder to beat, granting him the ability to sense any and all danger, and Spider-Man responds accordingly. Batman, on the other hand, is the absolute best. 
Being able to defeat Lady Shiva, who is stated by Batman to be unmatched in combat ability, Deathstroke, a superpowered mercenary, Ra's al Ghul, the leader of the League of Shadows that has been alive and fighting for hundreds of years, gaining superhuman strength, speed, and stamina. He knows 19 different fighting styles, which I had in my original Arkham video, but Kazi will be posting that soon. And Batman has mastered all of them. He can even predict his opponent's moves, keeping himself two steps ahead, reaching physical and mental perfection. Even Insomniac's Taskmaster would fall short in comparison of combat when going against the Dark Knight. And this is one of the only Batman that doesn't need prep time to win. If Spider-Man and Batman had a hand-to-hand -hand fight at close range, Spider-Man is going to be waking up with bats flying over his body. Both Bruce and Peter are equipped with an array of gadgets that aid them in their battles, with Batman having every gadget in the book, including sonic and remote batarangs, flashbangs, smoke bombs, freeze grenades, explosive gel, line launchers, hacking devices, cryptographic sequencers, and even shock gloves that build voltage from the kinetic energy of his opponent's faces, disruptors that allow him to disable Spider-Man's web shooters, detective vision that allows him to see through walls and know his enemy's heart rate and level of fear, and of course a little button on his right arm that allows him to call a 12,000 pound tank that can fire non-lethal bullets out of a 16 millimeter cannon 1,680 meters per second that can combo with the Dark Knight. With Spider-Man having many gadgets as well as his web shooters that can support the weight of a 10,000 pound helicopter, meaning if Batman gets webbed up, it's all over. He has a web grabber that can pull all the surrounding enemies into a single area, a concussive blast that sends shockwaves launching his opponents into the air, and with his symbiote suit, he has complete control and manipulation of his tendrils. With Peter being Spider-Man for many years, he has an extremely high battle IQ, however, compared to Batman, he's nothing. Batman has fought people who's been alive and fighting and gaining IQ for hundreds of years, an entire army who was specifically trained by the Arkham Knight and Hugo Strange on how to defeat Batman and even Asriel, a super soldier who spent many years of his life studying Batman to eventually take the cowl, and all of them were completely completely defeated in a single night. In terms of mental fortitude, Batman takes it and it's not even close. Although Spider-Man was able to withstand Scorpion's poison, which turned an entire city into an ocean of poison and was still able to find a cure, Batman within the course of a single night across all of his games has been injected with enough fear toxin to drive 10 men insane, poisoned to near death on multiple occasions, buried and resurrected in his own mind, and relived the death of his friends and family. Dived into fear toxin that was able to nuke an entire city City, and worst of all, he had the clown prince of crime trying to take over his mind throughout the entirety of Arkham Knight, and at the end of the night, he was able to overcome all of it, burying the Joker in his mind. So in the matchup between New York Savior and Gotham's symbol of fear, the winner is Arkham Batman. The reason that Batman wins is because both of their stats are extremely relative. Although Spider-Man blows Batman out of the water in terms of lifting strength, their attack potency or how hard they can hit are around the same. With both being able to damage characters that can tank building to large building level explosions, and this would apply to their durability as well, as they have both survived the same level of attacks. And both of them would have fluid durability throughout their games. As for speed, they would both be relative once again, with both of them being able to dodge lightning. Catwoman dodging electricity, and Spider-Man dodging Electro's blast, which would both be high hypersonic. However, Batman would have the slight edge due to him being faster than Selina, who performed a similar feat to Spider-Man, and being able to speed blitz a room of 10 men in 10 seconds, with both their stats being relative to one another, their fight would come down to combat skill and gadgets. If Spider-Man decides to fight Batman straight up in terms of skill, it's going to be another Tuesday night for Batman. Even though Spider-Man has learned and used very various forms of martial arts, Batman knows all of them, and even more, and he's trained each and every one of them to perfection, defeating people who are unmatched in skill. However, Spider-Man has his spider sense working in his favor, as he can detect all danger and respond accordingly. However, Batman has his own little version of spider sense, as he's able to predict his opponent's moves always staying two steps ahead, and Spider-Man's spider sense is pretty inconsistent at times. Spider-Man's web shooters are extremely durable, and if Batman gets webbed up like I said before, it's pretty much over. He won't be able to break out. However, Batman also has win cons in his gadgets, as his destructor is able to disable guns, and he can do the same to Spider-Man's web shooters. 
He also has hacking devices and freezing grenades that would subject Spider-Man to sub-arctic temperatures. On the other hand, Batman has never met anyone as agile as Spider-Man, as he's able to move and weave his way through the most impossible spaces. However, adapting to his agility shouldn't really be a problem for Batman, especially with Batman being able to predict his opponent's moves and a Spider-Man that is inexperienced in comparison. But given Spider-Man's black suit, he becomes exponentially more powerful, leaning all of the stats into his favor, except for combat skill of course. But it definitely isn't over for Batman. Entering into the events of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, people automatically assume that this Batman is nerfed, however, he's much more powerful than he ever was before. Within this game, Batman has gotten much more information about the Justice League and his armor is enhanced as well. Batman claims to have the most advanced technology that anyone's ever seen, even while having knowledge of the Green Lantern Ling which is stated by Lex Luthor to be able to make literally anything. Even the Flash within this game has had his suit built by Wayne Tech, and of course Batman would integrate this into his suit. The Flash is able to have a long drawn out fight against Green Lantern, and Green Lantern's shield is able to protect Brainiac's ship from a literal nuclear bomb. But remember that Spider-Man's always holding back, but at the same time, so is Batman. In the end, I guess we finally know who wins between a spider and a bat, because if Spider-Man tries to take on the Dark Knight, the only thing that he'll be hearing is Peter. Peter it's time to get up. What's up guys, it's Divine. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. And if you want to sponsor a video, I have my cash app linked in the description where you can sponsor your very own video. And of course, shout out to Kazi for hopping on this one. His channel will be linked in the description as well. And make sure you guys go join the Discord where you can chat with me, get unreleased content, and even get a shout out within the videos. And of course, I'll teach you exactly how to become a YouTuber. So join up. Anyway, tell me in the comments, do you agree with the verdict? Was I right? Was I wrong? Let me know. And try not to take it too serious. Have fun with it. But tell me in the comments, who should go up against him next? Who could defeat Arkham Batman?